morning and welcome to Coffee with Pastor. Let's see, this is the 30th of July. Good morning, and I trust you have a hot cup of coffee. Mine is right here, and it is indeed ready to be enjoyed. And open up your copy of the Word of God, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, we'll be finishing off the epistle of 2 Peter this morning. And with that having been said, and you opening up your Bibles, let's turn our attention to our point to ponder. This comes to us by way of St. Augustine. The Bible is shallow enough for a child not to drown, yet deep enough for an elephant to swim. So true. The Bible is shallow enough for a child not to drown, yet deep enough. For an elephant to swim, St. Augustine. We'll put that aside, and again, this is going to be a wonderful morning. It started out, it's raining, um, but that's okay. That's liquid sunshine, and we're going to enjoy the day from the very beginning to the very end. Like I said, I'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee, and I look forward to the time that you and I spend, and not often enough do I say thank you for your faithfulness to us here each and every morning. It is almost the nine o'clock hour, and let's bow to our heads, our hearts together before our Heavenly Father. Good morning, Lord. And we thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day that you have given to us. Lord, we pray that you would guide our steps today, each and every one of them. You know the tasks that are at hand. And Father, we just pray for your provision. We pray for your grace as we approach each circumstance. Father, not only that we would have the grace and knowing that it is sufficient, but that we would be ministers of grace to everyone we come into contact with. Father, we thank you for this beautiful, beautiful opportunity, the day that you have given to us. Father, again, as we ask your blessing upon your people, we pray for nothing but your richest blessings. Father, give us eyes to see how you are at work in our hearts and in our lives. Eyes to see the opportunities that are around us, people who need the Lord, people who need a word of encouragement, people who need a bright spot in their day. And Lord, use us to provide those needs, at least to seek to meet those needs. And Lord, today, if you would be pleased with us, that you could look upon your people and smile because we seek to do your will. As we mentioned earlier, today is a brand new day. You knowing full well what the day holds for us. Father, bless this day. Help us again to realize that we are not our own. We're not here to attain comfort or even recreation. We're here to do your will. So, Father, it's to that end that we pray. We ask again that you, that you would be pleased. We open up your word this morning, thanking you for it, seeking a blessing from your hand, seeking instruction from you. Father, again, give us eyes to see the truth that is your word. And Father, help us to live accordingly. We thank you and we praise you for this beautiful day, for each one that joins us. And Father, again, that you might be pleased with us. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We are in the book of Second Peter and chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance, 
that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as, none, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blindness. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do. Also, the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led astray with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Where is the promise of his coming? For 2,000 years, pastors have stood behind the pulpit and proclaimed that one day Jesus Christ is going to return. And beloved, I will continue to do that. Where is the promise of his coming? The delay is his long suffering, not willing that any should perish. Beloved, if we have this kind of hope, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation, lifestyle? Well, for number one, we ought to be faithful people. People who are faithful to our God, doing his will, doing his bidding, seeking his glory. Beloved, be faithful. Never allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, remember, he loves you. We love you. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.